it's so good to be home. You forget what a paradise Edinburgh is. Almost recovered from the Japan trip, uh, still after oh, maybe 20 years of being a professional composer. I'm still absolutely at my wit's end at the end of um, projects, to the point where these fantastic producers and directors, you know, they'll send me an email going, need to fix this cue. And it's like the reaction I have inside me is as if someone has just pointed a gun at one of my children's head and shot a bullet through it. But of course it isn't. You know, the tiredness, the exhaustion just puts everything into a different light that's just kind of totally insane. I mean, Oscar is the nicest dog in the known universe. And I remember turning to my wife at the end of this uh, last season of Inside Number Nine going, He's really fucking getting on my tits. And you just know when the nicest Cocker Spaniel in the world is being demonized by yourself, you're the demon. So I'm gonna kind of continue looking into how I can uh, manage uh, I wouldn't say it's even stress, it is tiredness management, because from the tiredness comes the stress, it's absolutely mental. Um, so we're just heading back to the man cave, uh, because I thought there was a couple of really interesting things that I learned from my trip to Tokyo. Uh, not Tokyo itself, it's more that, that uh, I had to do an entire... Uh, TV episode of Inside Number 9 uh, whilst I was out there. So I needed to in ensure a few things were in place before leaving. And I guess the most important thing was that I had a fertile plant pot from which something really brilliant could grow. So the most surefire way of me achieving that is to make my own sample library. So you would have seen me get four cellos in one room, tie them through to another room and put their signals through four guitar amps, which was uh, fantastic. And uh, I put the uh, sample library together on the plane or certainly the bits that I was going to use uh, for the TV series. Now, what this ensured for me was personally that I would have a fertile new ground of experimentation Experimentation, which I know always gives me kind of ideas to create something kind of simple but something challenging to the ears, something that you hadn't heard before. So I think by coming up with a really crazy idea like that, I kind of gave myself the tools to not guarantee success but to kind of edge it along its way. I also, as is usual these days, uh, restricted my template size because... You starve yourself of resources, you get more resourceful. I will say that every week. Um, but uh, as a consequence, what, what I like to do is instead of having a, a template of hundreds of sounds, um, I tend to have to make use of the sounds that I've got to do stuff that I could just grab from other libraries and from other areas. So uh, let's have a listen to um, the slides up that you saw being filmed with the cellos through uh, four guitar amps. which in itself is a nice motif. But I think the other thing that's uh, crucial about this kind of stuff is because there's a degree of kind of uh, chaos in there and there's something moving, there's something changing notes, you really don't have to do much for it to kind of blossom into something very full sounding. We also did some uh, slides up going into uh, rhythms. Really useful stuff. And then some uh, single hit stuff where we could create our own little instruments. If you're careful, you can hear me tweaking the ring modulator there. some slightly more the evil longs I particularly like the Ben Foskett who orchestrated the session also came up with these great rhythms 
So uh, that was all. Everything basically was done at 120 BPM so that I could use simple kind of 48K mathematics to uh, chop behind the samples so that they're loopable, but then get the sample starts all in at kind of 96,000 samples, all of that kind of stuff. So it was all very simple. And then I kept the whole piece 120 BPM and I did everything in a single uh uh, queue as before. Again, if the program is locked and the program has a kind of certain rhythm to it, I think this is just an awesome way of working. And if you get to a point where people go, oh, that bit's really dragging, you just literally pop it out as its own individual queue. Uh, so alongside those rhythms, the electronic quartet, as I've called them, I also use some basic Albion uh, uh, loops and a Stevenson's pad and it was interesting because I got to the end of the entire kind of my first pass of the entire show and I just felt I was missing a melodic element something that could give me some kind of motif that I could grapple onto whilst it's quite a dark ambient piece um, there was also a couple of moments of kind of emotion so I needed something that we could kind of pin our heart on if you know what I mean uh, the other thing was that I was missing a couple of key kind of swipes and kind of oh my god boom moments. Now again this is an example that I have my kind of scary prepared piano samples I always go to and they're literally in every other score of mine alongside say the Darwin kind of hits, the big low booms. So I wanted to try and basically restrict myself to a single instrument that could do all of those things. So I went for the Gwilym Sincock uh, felt piano which is a great favourite of mine, always provides a bit of emotion but I didn't... I didn't want it to go kind of straight up, so I actually duplicated the instances in a single multi. And what I did is transpose it down four to ensure that I was using different samples between the two instances. And then I kind of reverse engineered it, so I tuned it back down to so the actual, just re-pitched it back down four, but also 21 cents to give this slightly kind of disorientated, detuned piano sound. which was more in keeping of the piece. I then, when you uh, have a piano or an instrument that is kind of detuned like that, it really screws around with vocal effects. So I use this Logic uh, vocal effect, stuck the formant up to, not completely 100%, and the minute you press more than one note, it kind of glitches. and then just added a bit of delay and reverb. What's also great about this effect though is if you wanted oh my god moment I could create a kind of deep boom with it. Conversely instead of using my evil swipe I could uh, do a swipe with the glitching piano. So just by restricting uh, the number of instruments I could kind of insert at the kind of after the first pass of the process, I had to be slightly more inventive with a single instrument. But again, as I say, and I'll return to how I stemmed this and all of that kind of stuff maybe another time. But again, this system of working in a single pass uh, when you've got a, a locked episode that is of a, a certain length is very much a, a good way of working. I have to say that I did fall into the trap of screwing up the one and only file with all the cues on. I don't know what happened, but basically I pumped out some stems just to kind of a pass for the director to hear. And at some point I fell asleep whilst at my rig and I managed to undo about, I would say, four hours work, I, literally by, I think, sleeping on Command Z. And um, then when I woke up, I saved it and I just couldn't get back to the last four hours of work I did. So there, therein lies one warning, but I think also uh, a health and safety thing with being too tired and operating heavy machinery, such as going to Tokyo to do a promotional tour whilst also creating a totally new soundscape for uh, an episode of a TV series. But anyway, I hope this has been help to you. As always, if you like what I do, hit like. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. And for all relevant links, look in the video descriptions box below.